Hartford returning back to Winston-Salem, not even a full calendar year. Remember, they played here. It was 1-0 at halftime. And then Wake Forest ended up winning that one 3-0. Wofford a lot more experienced this time around. And they are on the quest of hoisting or wearing the SoCon crown for the first time since 2013. Our officials tonight will be Daniel Radford, assistant referee Chris Zerner, and Gabriel Rivera. Will be, that will be our staff tonight. Wake Force also with a nice streak. Their only loss of the season was against Pittsburgh. And here comes Roald Mitchell. And Roald Mitchell got clipped up from behind, I think, by Dennis. It'll be a set piece already for the Demon Deacons. Playing a short option. Here's Ogara. Ty, big fan of this uniform matchup. Love, yeah. both, love both these uh, threads. Both schools, their official colors are all gold and black. Escrobato threads it to Cooper Flax. Cooper Flax, of course, who, the player we highlighted in the intro, scored the first goals of the last two matches. Austin College, that was all they needed. A very rainy afternoon up there in Massachusetts. When Wake Forest came out, gutted it out. That, Boston College, that right there is an example of why the ACC is so good, Kyle. Boston College, you say, oh, that's an easy win, right? I mean, anybody that goes up there and the defense that Boston College possesses is a threat. I mean, you think you're going to go in there, say, a Syracuse or a Carolina or a Pitt, go in there and, and thump them? No, it's nail-biting all the way to the end. Yeah, the depth of the league is really what makes it so difficult because a, a lot of the big leagues have talent at the top, right? You know, you've got your Pac-12, uh, it was competing right there with the ACC and then on down the line. But really what makes the ACC so tough is the depth. And then Bobby has told us a couple of times, Coach Muse says, you know, you've got the depth of the ACC and then their non-conference schedule, games like this against teams that are very good. Right, yeah. There's no, there's no, I don't even want to say rest, there's no off days, right? Yeah, we said that big really is no off days. And then uh, just the way the Wake Forest started their season uh, with such a stout lineup, uh, California and then Grand Canyon, both of those teams right now projected to go to the NCAA tournament. But uh, Wofford also with a tough slate in the beginning of the year. They went to Duke and tied them. And they thought, oh, well, that might be a fluke, right? Well, Wofford has been pretty steady. And like you said, good way to have a season is by not allowing goals. And with someone like Cameron Victor back there, they have done just that. We'll see if the potent offense of Wake Forest can give them a test. And Ty, you know how much I love to talk tactics. And we had a really fun chat with uh, Joel Tyson about this match and and how they want to attack Wake Forest. This 4-4-2 diamond is really an interesting setup. It's not something they've played normally this year. They are a three at the back team, but with the players available and the film that they watched, Coach Tyson told us that they're ready to attack this Wake team, but they are gonna need Cameron Victor at the back for sure. And there is Cameron Victor. No goals allowed, nine saves in the last three matches, five shutouts in the last six matches, 287 shots faced in 28 games played. But the key stat is that none on frame. We were, they had very few on frame. Go back to the Mercer game, which Mercer is very, very good too. Could contend for the title for SoCon. They only had two on frame the entire match as Wofford tried to create something in the midfield. 
And Wallet try to interject himself as the Terriers looking to shock the world here against number four, Wake Forest. They just moved up in the rankings at about five o'clock Eastern Standard Times where we got the latest poll. Over the top, here comes Ruel. Oh, he had a nice beat on Escribano, but Escribano recovery was outstanding. And now the Terriers really working around the 18. They are, but that was a really good intervention by Prince and Ponza. That ball was a, a really solid delivery vertically through the line, and he just stuck a foot out and said no. This Wofford team tie looks really comfortable on the ball. They are not frazzled in possession, but with that, they've managed to keep possession and then they're playing route one to the striker up front. So they've been able to possess comfortably in their own half and then hoof it forward. It's a weird combination of, of how to build into the attacking half. Looking to try to use the right channel with Wallet. The speed of these gunners on the outside are top class. I mean, they are a headache for defenders. They are. Forbes and Wallet. Absolutely. And that's the weakness of this 4-4-2 diamond tie. And that's where Wake Forest is going to really attack the unique formation today for this Wofford team because th those fullbacks in the 4-4-2 diamond are going to be on an island with the wingers, and here's one of them now. Forbes. Escribano looking up. Nice. In pass right center to Flax, then over to Forbes, and Forbes sent it over the bar. And Forbes, at least with a good look. And there is Coach Steve Ormus, the associate head coach. Coach Muse unable to attend. He has a family obligation he has to attend. So Coach Steve Armas will be the acting head coach for tonight's match. And right beside him is Dane Brenner as the two associate head coaches. Ruel. Terriers getting aggressive here, moving their line all the way up. You see Jones moving up now. He'll come right back. Both teams kind of knocking it around and looking to get a feel of each other. There's Tubbs and Kojima. Quickly getting covered up by Gorst. The intervention is won by Wofford. Wofford's held the majority of possession so far, it feels like, Ty. At least the majority of the attacking possession. They've done a lot of it in their own half, but Wake has not really been able to impose their traditional dominance in this game so far, that is a very unlucky bounce yeah, for very Liam Ogara because he had tons of space to charge into. I don't think he quite agrees with it, but it did pop up. And the official will say it's a free kick on a handball. Now, Wofford tried over the top. It looked promising, but Escribano was able to get back there in time. Probing pass and taken away by Prince and Ponza. One touch by Earl Mitchell looking to connect with Wallin, but a little heavy on the touch. Well, the pitch looks nice after an extended time away. Deeks glad to be home. Glad to have number four next to their name. Dennis, 
Dennis kind of looking for an option, and that was a very tough play with a row in between two Wake Forest defenders with Forbes. Lurking. Well, the Terriers working into the center of the pitch as they create another attack. Gorst sliding it over to Parker as Parker looks up. Very confident back line, as you can see, Kyle. They are not scared at all. And this is taken away, dispossessed. Cooper Flax was the one in charge of that theft. Here is Wallet. Wallet on the outside of his boot, trying to connect. Here is Roald Mitchell, and he sends one sizzling high over the bar. Yeah, he's looking for that top right corner. Wake Forest didn't quite have the numbers to break as quickly as they wanted to. Well, Lent had to hold up for a moment, but a fortunate bounce there. And Roll just did not get his body on top of that shot. Wake Forest, that offense back clicking again. ACC ranked second. The goals per game, just a little over two. And that's number nine is a good reason for that. Always a threat. And Okay, so he hasn't been able to score in a couple games, but usually what... It's most people that watch these soccer games don't quite understand is the movement away from the ball, what he creates. And so Rob Mitchell may not have, have himself on the stat sheet, but if you look at the games, you'll see what kind of opportunities he's able to create as he sends this one over to the right channel. Wallet, Wallet with an absolute scorcher that just went right of that right post and i think they've worked a corner out of it it looks like it may have taken a deflection that was a vicious hit from a tight angle it, it did not look like they expected him to take this shot turned his defender around completely just put him on a, a merry-go-round and the shot deflected wide flax will take it out swinger and he'll just play the smart ball Put right back into the mixer, sneaking around on that far stick was Prince and Panza. And that was a good idea. And Wake Forest is irate. Uh, they think it's another corner. It clearly was a corner. I mean, this is put out by the defender sliding in uh, to block the cross. That I mean, that is a blatant corner. Finally, they've corrected the uh, they've corrected the call. And it was off on Jones. <laughs> the linesman was the one that gave the goal kick, and eventually I think the referee over, overruled him. This time Flax from the near flag. High in, pinching in. A little bit of a curl to it. And off and running is the freshman Menendez, but Menendez with a heavy touch, and the ball goes right back to Wake Forest. Flax looking for that center option. Have to play it back to his support with Escribano. Flax in the pocket. Plays a square ball to Ogara. And Ogara the long ball diagonally going towards that flag as Wallent. Even with his speed, couldn't quite get it and reach it before it went out past the byline. And we talked to Coach Tyson and I got to tell you, he is a very, very smart soccer coach. I mean, he's talking strategy, um, you know, tactics. It, it was very impressive. His fifth season, uh, he has a lot of love for this program. I uh, vividly remember him bowing out in the SOCON tournament against Furman and just how gut-wrenching it was for his team as he clearly had a lot of confidence that they could make a run of what he returns um you know he said it on the phone he he likes the core group and uh, you get that kind of experience that bodes well for you and right now they're running that nice streak that is a streak that is one of the best in the nation yeah it's a really impressive run for this team that was a, a really gut-wrenching loss three to two is the score of that game and all five goals were scored in the first 35 minutes of the game. It was 3-1 Furman. Wofford made it 3-2 in the 35th minute. And then no goals the rest of the way. They, they really 
gave it a run. Uh, but this year, he's embraced that if we don't concede goals, we are putting ourselves not just in a position to not lose, but we get a, a chance to win every game if we just don't concede at the back. Because especially against teams that you're not expected to beat, like Wake Forest, the longer the game goes in the balance, the more confidence the underdog has right. and the less confidence and more nervy the favorite has. So, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you know, just playing not to lose is a maybe a, a bit of a lesser or small team mentality. It really does give you a chance to win every game, and that's what they've done. They've had a couple draws. They've had a couple wins because they're in every single match. Well, they were in this match a year ago. It was 1-0 at half. Escribano, good look up. He's got some time. Oh, and after a couple deflections, Victor able to get a paw on that one. It'll be another corner for the Demon Deacons. This is a really good run by Escribano. He's not a guy who gets up in this area too, too often, but he saw that no one was stepping to him. So he said, all right, I'll uh, touch this into space and have a hit. And it just deflects up the back heel of a defender and wins a corner. Flax used the short option with Forbes. And once again, Wake Forest will look to finish as they move into the final third. Heading right back up, trying to get over the top to Garrison Tubbs. High on the ladder is Kojima. Here's Kojima. Look at that settle. Great first touch. Flax scanning. Use the support to Escribano. Orchestrating another attack as Wake Forest camped out here on the final third. Poked away, possession back to the Terriers, and then they're off and running. Ruel, eight goals. One of the top goal scorers in the country. And Wake Forest aggressively taking the ball away. Look at Wallen hurtling. And a foul caught on the Terriers. Yeah, and the first one would have been a foul, too, if he hadn't skipped over the challenge. In fact, I bet that would have been a yellow card. Well, Lent decides, I'm going to keep going rather than win the foul and get a booking. That is uh, a really admirable. Escribano sprays it back to the left again to Forbes. Forbes. He loves that diagonal pass. It wasn't there as Kojima was making the run. And Forbes giving it a left heave hole. Somehow stays in bounds. Escribado. He was looking towards Wallins. And they will recycle it around. Now, under 27 minutes to go in the first half. Wake Forest has five shots. Wofford has none. We're still at a stalemate at nil-nil. Cooper. Flax. Try to give it to Wallins. I tell you and what, Ty. Tapped out by Wofford. It'll be another corner. To Cooper Flax, we talked about his development in the, in the beginning of the broadcast. He has gotten on top of a couple of loose balls that have just ended up right in his lap. That is, when they pile up like that so often, that's no longer luck. That is skill. He is on top of every loose ball. And he just has such pitch awareness. It's outstanding. That's the fourth corner for Wake Forest. Wofford has none. In swinger, high in the air. Oh, knocked around. Rolled Mitchell got a piece of it. He scorpion kicked that, I think. <laughs> what a goal that would have been. Cummins clips it. Tubbs can't quite reach it. Forbes was right behind him. And it will roll the way back. And while in kind of playing that center back position, here's a outside winger coming all the way back as Tubbs finally gets back into his position. That's a cheeky play by Flax on uh, Wallen making the run down that line. That was clearly a bad tackle. <laughs> Menendez out and running and looking for Ruel. Gorst. 
He was searching for help immediately. Attacked by Cooper Flax are right on his heels. Here's Jones. And the Terriers say it's our ball, but it's not. Let's see what Roald Mitchell tries to do. Oh, it was hard to tell if the, he got the contact with the head or the back heel, but he certainly tried both. <laughs> Kojima sees some space and continues to surge ahead. Forbes. Oh. And he is going to be ruled offside. That was close. And he that he was doesn't close. Uh, fight it, though, so clearly he knows best. So the side judge says he is offside. We'll get a look at this. Tried to hold his run. Yep, he just was off a little bit early. I think Kojima probably could have played that ball a little bit quicker and either decided, hey, I'm gonna drive this all the way on goal or make the pass. But how about the afterburners on Jose Kojima right through the middle, split two midfielders. And he sees space, he will attack it. It's Cummins. Shots seven to Wake Forest. Zero to Wofford at this juncture as we move closer to 23 minutes remaining. Yeah, I mentioned early in the broadcast that it seemed like Wofford had most of the early possession. Wake has clearly put themselves in the ascendancy now. Bit of a wayward pass there. We'll see what Wofford can do on the break. Here they go. Look at Jima get all the way back. It's pushed up ahead. Ruel will not win that battle against Tubbs. Tubbs nifted, it, pulls it back. And now Wake Forest working into the midfield. How about that from Garrison Tubbs? He faked like he was going to shield the ball out of play and then just snatched it right out of the opponent's pocket. Flax. Nice little space. Plays Forbes and Forbes across. Forbes with a shot and it is going to be sick on the ground and stopped by the stomach of Victor. Forbes blasted one over early in this game. Big chance that he saw go over the crossbar. So tried to keep it a little lower here. Just a bit too central, but a shot on target. And that is what you want. More shots on frame are never a bad thing. The Deeks use every inch of this pitch. The width, the length, I mean, they are all over. The endurance is also impressive, just on how their outside backs can get up and down the field and look like they don't even break a sweat. Escribano backing up, still playing in those center channels as Flax plays it to the left. Escribano building again. Looking for the one-two on the triangle passing, but Flax does not play it to Forbes. Oh, good play by Ogara. What a ball. On a spin on that is Kojima. It's like a golfer who puts backspin on a chip, just <laughs> dinks it right into the pin. Forbes. Oh, looking to link up with Flax. Here is Roald Mitchell. Can't quite turn. Ogara will clean it up and put it right back into the final third. Wofford has 11 players behind the ball now. They are compact at the moment. Deeks are doing everything they can to break down the Terriers and just have not been able to. And the use of space, Forbes, Flax, Escribano had to pull back on that, got it. Two defenders. Right there at the six, Forbes was there. Here's Ogara, and Ogara trying to line up a rocket. It was deflected away by the Terriers. As Wofford hoping that they can finally get it down to their attacking third. 20 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. It's nil-nil. The Demon Deacons moving up to number four in the country as the poll was just released 
uh, two hours ago. Flax, Forbes, that connection so brilliant. Forbes across, right at the goal mouth and nobody there. But brilliant work by Flax and Forbes. Ty, you mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast the chemistry that those two have built. You can see it. Cooper Flax is trailing every play because he knows that Jelani Forbes loves that cutback. And it's been there a couple of times. They've just misfired on a couple of them and had a few sniffed out. That has been the best attacking option so far for the Deeks. They, they can do that in their sleep on that attack, just how they train. Uh, they, they have a drill where they constantly move up the, the pitch, and it's bang, bang, bang. Forbes gets it, and, I mean, it is a diagonal pass, and then bang, whether it's Cooper Flax or somebody coming in right in the center or close to the 18, and it is like clockwork. It's a, it's a uh, thing of beauty to watch. Forbes, you can see the respect that uh, the Terriers are giving Forbes. Uh, trying to step to him. Well played, Flax to Forbes. Forbes left foot swing, it's a cross and maybe Rold Mitchell did have a look at a little bit far from his boot. And now the Terriers I want to see if they can work something, but the numbers clearly on the side of the home side. As Menendez just slamming up against the back of Prince and Ponza. Menendez, a freshman from Greer, South Carolina. He was the South Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. It's the second Gatorade Player of the Year from... Uh, his Riverside High School. His team was ranked nationally last year. Now, one storyline that some fail to remember by this about this Wofford team is they also lost a player to the transfer portal that went to Clemson, who was a big key of their offense last season so you get that kind of a surprise oh by the way you're not going to have that tool and then you're still able to rise above it and go to work yeah transfer portal in every sport has kind of changed the landscape of college athletics here in collegiate soccer it's been a way for players to move up programs and and you know find uh, test themselves at different places but it can give coaches headaches yeah it can be an advantage too right some coaches can fill holes through the transfer portal and that's a positive too so it goes both ways but it can be a headache sometimes it was jackson roble who went to clemson that's the player he's got two goals and two assists this season in his first year coach tyson had booster Schubert, who is at Syracuse. Also a very crucial player to that program is Escrobano. Here is Kojima. Jeffrey White has come in for the Demon Deacons. Flax, one touch. Here's Kojima lining it up. Kojima, one extra touch. Here's a banger by Ogara, and he put a hole in that safety net. Just couldn't get it down, but uh, a good hit. A little too much. Yeah, just not able to get his body over the ball. Kojima maybe a couple extra touches, but he's got the, Ogara has the confidence to rip those from dead ball situations and from open play. This Deke's offense has started to really meander its way up the mountain. And I mean that in almost a literal sense. You look at the way that Wofford is packed in mm -hmm. when they get all 11 players behind the ball and the Deeks basically go vertical by being horizontal, just working it back and forth along the pitch and slowly sidewindering their way forward into the attacking third. 10 shots, two on frame. And Wofford still looking for their first shot. He's coming into the ball game just recently is Jeffrey White, the freshman from Tampa, Florida. 
There's a lot of talent. Menendez moving up the pitch over here on this right side is Holman. And Holman will get it. Holman looking. He'll play Ruel. But blanketed by Prince and Panza. A fortuitous bounce that will allow the Terriers to work. Here's a shot on a half volley right outside of the 18 with good contact. I believe that was Colaire. Yeah, this is ripped, Ty. And I don't know how Tr uh, Trace Alfin managed to catch it. That's a knuckler that is seeking just inside the left post. Alfin could have just parried that away safely and either conceded a corner or kept the ball in play, which is dangerous. But safety first, right? But no, he manages to make the catch on that. That was Parker, pardon me, Nick Parker, who hit that one. And that had a lot of pace to it. So their first shot on frame. Just under 14 minutes to go in the first half. We still sit nil-nil. Nathan Childress, the sophomore, who's come in. Baba Niang. Will return to the pitch right off the bench. This is his first appearance tonight. Coming in for Jelani Forbes. Let's see where Baba Niang goes. Will he stay on that outside? Looks like he will. So good news to Jones is, or pardon me, to Holman that Forbes goes out. Bad news is you got Baba now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pick your poison with those two. Niang is a powerful midfielder, but they've used him out wide recently because he's got really good dribbling skills and has quick acceleration. Flax scanning again, and the two center midfielders going to work. Here's Flax, spits it out. Here's Baba Niang trying to turn on it. Escribano makes a step. White. White takes a shot. He sent it just a little over. Was it tipped? Yep. It was. Wofford's turn not to be happy about this call. It took the referee a while to make up his mind there. Did you see the oh. double team quickly on Rold Mitchell? I mean, Rold Mitchell has been yeah, look at that. suffocated. Three guys on his back, actually. So, and that's another thing. I mean, you know, he's not getting goals in the last what couple games, but you get three defenders on you. That means that's uh, a couple people open. <laughs> Twelve minutes remaining. Corner kick high in the air. Zogara and Ponza plays it back to Sydney Parish. Cycling it all the way around and back to that right channel. White. Here's Flax. Flax. Can he send this one in the 18? Deflected away. The Terriers. With well, their backs against the wall. Desperately defending this potent attack of Wake Forest. Yeah, and whenever Wofford break, they've had to use Roel in midfield. To, to hold the ball up while they get numbers forward. And that's made it tough for him to get forward in the counterattack. So they've really struggled to hit Wake Forest on the, in transition when the Deeks cough up the ball. And that's allowed Wake to really push numbers high. Now you remember last season's match between these two teams, that goal first goal in the half came very very late and it was Garrison Tubbs I was able to sneak one past to make it one nil and then the Deacons of course added two more in the second half almost keeping that same script here in this one ten and a half remaining nil nil can we see a late goal here in the first half rolled Mitchell He's been double teamed all night. He sure has. Look, he's, I mean, he's got two defenders right on his heels, both center backs. 
are tailing Mitchell. Every single movie makes. They, the Terriers have said, we are going to make someone else beat us besides Roald Mitchell tonight. Roald Mitchell chasing on on Victor and sliding as he sends this one out of bounds, lost his footing. Now Cameron Victor played three years at Akron. Akron, one of the top five teams in the country. And he is on the cusp of breaking some school records. There he is on the shutout leaders as Terriers. And that's in limited action, like you just said, coming from Akron compared to a lot of the other guys on that list. So Gara, so good at keeping his head up. Any young player watching this, watch 33, just able, you can see he's already planning before that ball gets there. I mean, he's gonna make sure that he's gonna settle, but he's already scanning and that's how you play the game. Yeah, it, football. his head is on a swivel the whole match. I mean, every single ball that's played from anyone on his team to anybody else on his team, he is 360. He's got the radar pinging. He knows where everybody is. He's the traffic control center in the middle. Ruel. Here's Menendez. Sidney Paris locking that down. Mahabadi, one of the veterans in the back, number two, plays Childress. He was on that SoCon all-freshman team, along with Ruel. Ruel was trying to spin. And Good nice tackle. Desperate. Yeah, great tackle, too. Able to keep that away from Garino as Garino's come in. Jake Swallen into the game, too. The calming presence of Jake Swallen. So you do have a little bit of uh, both flavors on with Kojima, that machine and aggressive style, and then Swallen, that calm, collective center midfielder presence. He carries the wand, and you'll see that maybe here in a second. Well, and it's the ball. I think that. Swallen has had such a positive effect on Cooper Flax, too. You can see a lot of Jake's game in Cooper Flax. He is definitely a calming presence. But when he unleashes the beast, it's a thing of beauty. Here he is outside of his foot looking to link up with Kojima. And Kojima... Couldn't quite get that on his forehead. Right on cue, Ty. Yep. You said when he unleashes the beast, then he goes to put the outside of the foot cross right on a platter for Jose Kojima. I think the spin of the ball puts Kojima off a little bit. He had to, like you said, readjust his body to get back in, in a good position to head that one. Just couldn't get the spin right. And you, what a ball. You saw the wand, too. He, he'll hold it. It's just his way of kind of keeping his balance. It's... It's unique, but it's also, it's kind of like he's the, he's the maestro of, you know, the orchestra. But he can also create a lot of magic. And so can Sidney Paris. We saw that against Syracuse. The Navy transfer in his second year as a Demon Deacon. And now the Terriers trying to get some numbers up. Closing down, of course, Tubbs. Always Johnny on the spot. No stoppage of action on changing of who's going to throw it in. As first it was Jones, and now it's going to be Holman. Ruel. Ticking to five minutes remaining in the first half. We still sit nil-nil. But 
The Lions' share of possession clearly on the number four team in the country. They just can't quite find that final ball and finish it, but they have been camped out here in this attacking third. Swallen. Sydney Paris gets involved. Garino, nice turn. Garino. Garino with a rip and just not enough room for him to get his body around it. Yeah, I'm not sure that was the right decision there. He's basically got his entire back to goal and tried to 180 whip around shot. It just did not have the space for it. Had a couple of teammates there, but you see the gears turning. Baba Niang got on the ball with on a vertical delivery at the top of the penalty area touched it back and immediately someone made a run off his shoulder and received it. So they are moving in every possible angle to try and break down this Wofford defense and the Terriers just will not budge. Looking for a handball and they have been granted that Clock ticking, almost three and a half remaining. Oscar Sears has entered. Mm. Oh, good work by Baba Niang to Sears, and Sears trying to get that up ahead to Leo Garino. You can see the urgency in the frustration by this Demon Deacon team, they expect to already be on the board right now. Can this be it? Here's a shot and it's knocked down and that will spit out out of bounds. It'll be Here a corner. A so corner another kick. corner. We see, saw Jelani Forbes taking corners. He's off the field. Saw Cooper Flax taking Luke some. Forest, He's off Jake the field, Swallen. so here's Jake Swallen with a delivery. Sixth corner for the Deeks, third different taker. Swallen, outswinger, high in the air, arcing. Coming in is Ogara, still in a lot of traffic. Falling down was Mponza, and the Deacons are pleading with the official for a point to the spot. They want that on Cameron Victor. He fell to the ground and then starts flailing, and I think it's right there. Prince Ponza goes right over his leg as he tries to put a shot on goal. It's dicey, but you are almost never going to see that called. There's just too many bodies, too many people, too much going on for A, the official to see, and B, for something that subtle to be called. And that is dangerous. Looks like Jake Small is all right. But yeah, that is dangerous, especially uh, seeing Jake Swallen finally return to the pitch. We sit just about 90 seconds remaining in this first half as Garino, he is swallowed up by the Terriers' defense. Idea was there. Carino kind of almost on no look pass looking for that square ball, but then sent it for a through ball. Unfortunately, not on the same page with his teammates, but that was a clever idea. One minute remaining in the first half. Well, partner, under a minute. And we have 14 shots next to Wake Forest's name. Just one for Wofford. Two shots on frame for the Deeks, one for the Terriers. And Sears, that may have been deflected. He was looking to link up with Baba Yang. And Victor, with no hurry at all, even with Garino chasing. And we'll let this bleed out and finish the first 45. 
with a nil-nil scoreline. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that is how it will play out in chapter one of this one. A rematch between Wake Forest and Wofford. Almost way any type of opportunities for the Wolfpack, and it was clearly dominated by the old gold and black. The Wake Forest team and Deacons, the other team in old gold and black, the Wofford Terriers, the visitors looking for an upset, and they are level with the number four Wake Forest team and Deacons. What will the second half have in store? Cummins. Jeffrey White gets his start in the second half. Yeah, Ty, you talked about how Trace Alphans been a little bored there at the back. Since the pit game, he's made four saves in games against Liberty and Clemson. Other than that, in the other five, six saves. I mean, it's not, almost nothing to do. You know, he's just not faced a lot of shots. Well, that's... Well, we came into this year, he thought the strength of the team would be the back line, especially when you have Garrison Tubbs and Prince and Ponza at full strength, and we're seeing that now, and Trace Alphen is will gladly take being bored during a match. He's Cummins pinching in a little bit, playing back and forth with Kojima. Probing pass, here's Ogara. Ogara looked for a window, plays it back to support, and Cummins Cummins with a little Great heavy tackle. touch taken away, but look at the numbers. Is nothing's going to work out if Wofford's trying to get it up the pitch. Now they're able to get some bodies past that halfway line. Yeah, Thaddeus Dennis made a, a fantastic tackle. He saw that first touch coming and cut it out brilliantly. And like you said, there's just nobody there to play the ball to because they're so compact at the back. So if they want to snatch a moment in this game, they've got to stretch a little bit, and that could see this second half get really, really pacey on both ends. Inside the 18, the Terriers looking for that diagonal ball right back to Ruel. Nice turn. Look at the turn by Roll Mitchell. White is his target over here to the right. Deflected. As Roald Mitchell trying to get it back, he's able to knock it over to Forbes. There's Kojima. This is what we saw a lot in the first half. The through ball trying to link up with Roald Mitchell by Escribano. A little too heavy on that touch. Goes out of bounds. Well, the Deacons will welcome in their rival, the Tar Heels. The Tar Heels were flirting to get to the top 10, but they lost to Syracuse in a 1-0 loss at Chapel Hill but they are they are still ranked and they will be here as the visitors Saturday night for a huge huge throwdown in the ACC always fun when the Tar Heels and the Deacons collide doesn't matter what sport it is there's Ogara Cummins is they moved in here as White has used the width of the pitch, trying to connect with Cooper Flax, and it's taken away. Colaire. Here comes the press. Able to give it to Anderson up ahead, and Anderson into some space and time. He was clearly looking to go forward, but kind of really not much of an option there. Yep, and Wofford, I think, is now making an, an intention of possessing the ball because 
in that first half, they just had nothing on the counter. And so here they've said, let's ourselves play a little defense with offense. The more we possess the ball, the less time we allow Wake Forest to have it. I think in that first half, they got a little trigger happy with the, the counter attack and it let the Deeks onto the ball a lot more than they wanted. It's a good step by Matera's defense. Mitchell thought about turning, plays it back to Flax. Jeffrey White thought about possibly sending that long ball over on the switch, but played the right ball and played the smart ball. Well, somehow keeping that in possession. Yeah, that's your striker in his own defensive third with his back to goal. I mean, I, and there's just no options, so he has to play it back. And it's, it's pick your poison right now. Do you want to counter and risk coughing the ball right back up, or do you want to possess and allow the Deeks to recover? So it's been tough right now out of that low block for the Terriers. This is a chance. Anderson, 1v1 with Cummins. Cummins able to knock that one away. And it's last touch by Anderson, and it'll be a goal kick. Really well done. It looked like Bo Cummins had been beat. It looked like he cheated a little bit to the inside and allowed the winger to cut vertically, but he recovered with a great step. It was actually Jakob Anderson, I think, who was on the ball there, who's the, the left back. He's gotten involved into the attack, which is probably a good indication why he's able to provide some helpers this season. We have number nine lurking. Anything's possible for both sides, really. The card given to Escribano, but Ruel from Copenhagen, Denmark. 17 goals, 25 starts. That's a pretty good percentage. Yeah, Escribano just on the shoulder. That's that's well won over on that far side by Fabian Menendez because he felt the contact from Escribano. The ball got away from him a little bit, mm -hmm. and he said, all right, I'll take this foul, absorb it, get a free kick, maybe pick up a booking too, and that's exactly what he wanted. That's really good play from Menendez, who had a motor in the first half. He was everywhere on the field for this Wofford team made a ton of sprints. This is a chance. Oh, and that could be a yellow in the other direction. It is. He's going to the pocket. So Gorst will go into the book. That was a really big counter chance for the Deeks and a smart booking by Gorst. Junior midfielder from Alpharetta, Georgia. Had an assist, his only assist on the season was against Duke. Giveaway right here to Cooper Flax, and he, Gorst sees how much space Flax has to run into and says, this is the better option. Flax should take that as a compliment. He did not want to allow number 18 with some space to work. White, can he be the answer to finally get the Demon Deacons on the board here? He's intended to Flax, but cut out. I'd love to see how many passes Wake Forest has connected in this contest at the end of the match. It's a lot. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Right? As Rold Mitchell able to turn. Jeffrey White, flag stays down. Jeffrey White, and that is going to be smacked around and across the line. Forbes said it did. Will they check it? He's going to check it immediately. That's exactly what the ref's going to do here is he's going to go take a look because it, it was really hard to tell from up here at least if that crossed the line or not. The goalkeeper came out and, and palmed it away, but all he did was pop it right into the air, right on the goal mouth. And this is going to be fascinating to see White with a great quad cross. It pops right up. Oh, that's it. And oh, I don't know if there's yeah. enough to give it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, 
but where the where he played it, he was inside the net. If we, I don't know if I saw enough there, Ty, that I would say confidently watch, that's a watch, goal. Watch this. So this is exactly the vi the view right now that the official is looking at. So, mm -hmm. that's past the line. I, I, do, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't think there's enough video evidence there to, to overturn this. I mean, I don't even know if it's overturned because I don't know what the call was. But I, yeah, I, I don't think. I don't think Ty. I know what you're saying. It looks. It looks like that his foot is over the line when he plays the ball. But there's just not enough here on that. And I think that wry smile there may be uh, evidence enough that the Terriers know they might have gotten away with one. But just on that on that view, it, it, there's just not enough there. The burden of proof is on proving the ball went over the line. It looked like it probably did, but hard to be sure. Well, I'll, uh, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> You know I'm I, I right. Think, I think differently, but, um, I mean, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It, it and, never and hit. Saw the, the, really, the only way to prove it is to see the ball strike the ground and compare it to the line. When it's in the air at that angle, there's no way to know. Oh, that was a nice click. Oh, it's Kojima. He was hoping for that late wave coming behind to... Maybe hit a half volley, but nobody was there. The Deeks have tried a couple of times now to play Rold Mitchell with his back to goal right at the top of the penalty area, and he pings a one-time ball backwards to a, a streaking midfielder. It's worked, and, and it's gotten a couple of either odd bounces or open chances. So God, right? right like this again. Yep. Mitchell... Knocked off the ball, almost reached Ogara. It's cut out Ruel, and the challenge by Tubbs stepping right to number nine. The Deacon's back line has moved all the way up a high block. Well, a battle to watch here, Ty, is Rold Mitchell against Moa Mohammadi. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Mohammadi is playing him really physically now because he's he's sensed what's happening with Mitchell's back to goal. And every time he gets the ball, Mohammadi's right on his shoulders. Deacons riding a five match winning streak. And Wofford unbeaten in nine. So the streaks have collided here tonight in a Tuesday night non-conference tilt. Something's got to give there. Mm -hmm. Wake Forest has not been defeated since that loss at Pittsburgh. Really well done there by Kohler to keep possession amidst a really heavy press. One thing I love about this team, to, uh, Wofford team here, we'll, we'll get to that actually in a second. We've got a, a look here. At, here's a much better view. Again, it's just tough from that angle to with the ball in the air to, to say where it is. Tough, tough to see. Well, I just where his foot is, yeah. it's past the line. That's what I'm saying. With that ball, ha in order for that ball to hit that boot, it is pa it's in the net. That's what I'm getting at. And that's it what I think the like referee it. should see. It if looks like it, but you don't know it. <laughs> you don't know it for sure. It looks like it. Well, look at the line. You saw where the, the foot was. Prove it. After the foot. So after the foot hit it, then it goes to the post. Or the bar. It's bang, bang. I digress. But Well, one thing, Ty, I was going to say earlier before we went to that replay, one thing I love about this Watford What's your team, thoughts? <laughs> love a team yeah. that has players that wear the numbers of their positions. We need to yes, get back to I that. I love that. Get back to that. No, number six playing yeah. a number six. Number 10 playing a number 10. <laughs> number nine playing a number nine. Give me more of that. Yeah, that's uh, Coach Tyson for you, man. <laughs> 
That's on the players, too. Well, yeah, I mean... Good ball. For all broadcasters, we appreciate that. Still got a lot of soccer remaining. 32 and a half here in the second half. And it's nil-nil, but clearly this match has been dominated by the number four team in the nation. And unfortunately, with how soccer works, you got to get one in past the posts. And thought that uh, Wake Forest may have had one that was close. Kyle says no. I say yes. But, but regardless, Wofford the defense is it's it's been very very impressive it has and you know in this second half tie they've been on the ball a little bit more and that's put a a little bit of a lid on the amount of chances that the deeks can get it's not just wave after wave after wave of pressure for wake forest like it was in the first half they've managed to relieve pressure a little bit and then when they give the ball away it forces the deeks to build all the way back up again so we, you know, we talked uh, with Coach Tyson before the game, and and he said exactly that. One of his his key pointers tonight was we don't want to give up wave after wave of pressure, uh, an F in that regard in the first half, and it's been much better here. Well, Sixteen shots, four have been on frame. And Wofford just with that lonely one, but that one was very well hit. Julian Kennedy has come in looking for a spark off the bench as the focal point up top. Could he break the ice? What a ball through the lines. Oh, offside. Tough call. Yes. But I mean, that is gorgeous. When it's between two defenders mm -hmm. like that, it can cause a little confusion because sometimes the defenders don't know which one of them should get it and which one of them should stay back and uh, or stay off. And you saw it there. The two defenders kind of looked at each other like, which one of us is going to clear this? Coach Tyson with five draws on the season in his four years at the helm. It was a total of five ties in those four years. This year alone, five draws. Of course, that uh, sets us up for we need overtime again. <laughs> we need that golden goal. Just makes it fun. It sure does. Our control room doesn't agree with this. Well, I thought that's just in, but uh, that's not surprising. It's not. I mean, it's a lot better than extra innings in baseball. They're working. We're not. <laughs> We're just having fun. We'd love another thirty minutes of this. They're we would. working. Ogara. Here's Cummins. They make us look good. We just get to have fun. That's right. We do. Ooh. Tripped up is the point of the block there. That's the point to the spot. As Forbes got hooked over there. Just inside the 18. And it was number 15, Zachariah Holman, that hooked him. Yeah, what a way for the Deeks mm. to potentially get uh, the breakthrough here. Right on the edge of the penalty area. And, and a needless tackle because there's help behind you know, that would give Forbes a little bit of space if he gets through, but he's certainly not in on goal. Uh, it's just a clumsy tackle. Well here worked by Jelani Kennedy Forbes. And here's Julian Kennedy. Well, a team that is no stranger to PKs will get another one. They're five of six this season. And Julian Kennedy, who got a goal against NC State. Trying to tack on another one. Back-to-back -back games. Here we go. K 
Kennedy makes it official. It's 1-0. And the Deacons have taken the lead. And if first, if you don't succeed, Ty, try, try again. And that is exactly what the Deeks have done in this game. 17 shots. And finally one in the back of the net. What a brilliant penalty from Kennedy. Those are pressure moments, especially in a game where you've gone a, a, an hour with 16 shots and none have have found the back of the net. You, you sort of feel the pressure of, hey, I got to get this one or else we might not get one. And there was no pressure at all. Just pings this into the top left corner. Goalkeeper correct uh, guesses correctly. Look at him starting all the way in the back of the goal so that he can make his move forward. That's kind of smart, but just can't get to it. That is a nearly unsavable penalty for Julian Kennedy. And he takes his chance perfectly. Deeks up. Six of seven now on the year. And the Demon Deacons finally get on the board. With just under 30 minutes remaining in the second half. Julian Kennedy, who just got off the bench, hoping to spark the offense. Is the one that knocks it through on the PK. Kennedy had a goal against NC State. He chipped the keeper. Also had a goal at Campbell. And he gets one here tonight. And now we'll see what Wofford does trailing a goal. Because they, it, the impetus is now on the Terriers to move forward. And that's what they're doing here. Could make for a very open game. Let's see how open they want to play trailing with 28 minutes to go. You can see how great Wake Forest has been under Coach Muse. 122 wins, three losses, and five ties when they score first. Coach McIntyre loves that stat. He tells us <laughs> every time we talk to him every year. Coach Muse unable to attend tonight. He has a family obligation, but... I'm sure he'll take a look at this match and be happy that at least they get a goal here in the late in the second half, about 20, about 30 minutes remaining on a PK from Julian Kennedy. After his team has dominated possession and shots, and Kennedy might get another one, and that's knocked away. It will be another corner. Now, remember Kennedy... They did have a hat trick two years ago. Corner. Lobbed in the air looking for that far stick. And Wake Forest once again building and now moving into the attacking third. Looking for a second goal. Flax, he can hit it from there. Flax! And he sent that one just a little too much pepper on it. Went a little too high and over the bar. And now you can see this Deeks team really has its tail up, looking for another one. They are playing with a little, a little less anxiety, a little less tense movement. They're a little more free-flowing. And you can see before trying to find the best possible opportunity for a shot, now maybe let the, the chains off a little bit more and have a go from distance like that. Five shots on frame. A wrestling contest between Jeffrey White and Anderson. Good step, Sidney Paris. The Terriers. Not a lot of black kits in the area. Yeah, and that's been the story of this game, Ty. It does feel a little bit like it's been 11 on 10. It just feels like the Deeks have always had a few more guys in midfield. Kojima. 
Uh, he connected with Kennedy, but uh, weighted hit on that right foot sends it out of bounds. Swallen comes back in, as well as Wallent. So after you establish these two weapons on the outside with Wallent and Forbes, you bring in Jeffrey White in the freshman class who also is a weapon and coming off the bench as well as whatever you want to do with Baba Niang, whether it's in the center or whether it's outside. The hits just keep coming. Yeah, this is one of the deepest, if not the deepest team in the ACC, maybe in the country and multiple opposing coaches have told us that. It may not be the most star-studded team. Like, you, you don't have too many guys who are going to light up the stat sheet and, you know, compete for ACC Player of the Year, that kind of thing. But it is unbelievably deep. Almost, you, you could almost put together two full starting 11s that would compete at a very high level in this conference. I would agree. Ogara, part of this freshman class too, ranked ninth in the country. <laughs> Jake's Look feeling the outside Jake, of his boot Jake tonight. Jake is really feeling that outside. I mean, the wizardry is on display here with what he's been doing and connecting with his passes. His Niang linking up. Oh, he's looking for a handball. The awareness there by Jake Swallen. The idea on that one touch that was intended to go to the left and it popped up. Swallen is pleading with the official that it hit the hand and of a terrier. He, and he had the best look at it yeah. too, right? And he is just incensed that that was not called. Of course, our A team just gives us notification that they're gonna show us the replay have been money all year. As much as they hate us, we love them, right? <laughs> Take another look at it here. Jake Swallen adamant that it hits a defender's hand. I mean, that that's a penalty. Yeah. That's uh, as clear a day as it comes. Now, the only question there is whether it's in the box or not. He's literally standing on the edge of the penalty area. So the question there is, is it in the the area or not but that I mean that is as uh, stonewall a handball as you'll get if anything it should have been a free kick right in the edge mm -hmm. of the, the box well, that, so what do you think the official thinking that his hand was down at a natural or he just didn't see it hit the hand yeah. at all I, I don't know <laughs> I, I, I do not have an explanation for that one but I love the idea where Jake Swallen was going to go with it and Jake Swallen leading the charge Niang Niang is through oh brilliant work and Wallet spikes it in and puts a hole through the net. It's 2-0. And the Deeks can feel it now. They have been a lot less tense since the opening goal was delivered off the penalty spot, playing with more fluidity, more freedom. And you can see them just knowing where each person is going to be, even on deflections and after a, a bit of a scrum, it's a messy goal, but Wallent will take it and the Deeks will take it. 2-0 feels like a cavernous yeah. distance between these two teams, the way this game is played out. Really good work by Baba Niang. Goalkeeper maybe could have stayed back. That is such a tough thing for a goalkeeper to know how to do. He might have had defensive help there because that is, to be honest with you, Ty, that's a sensational tackle from the back to dispossess Baba Niang. But the goalkeeper, Victor, had come out already, and that left the goal open when it fell to Wallen. That's a, a really good tackle. And I think if you're the defender, you're looking at the goalkeeper like, I had it. You didn't have to come out. <laughs> but it did look for a moment like Niang was through. He had body position on both defenders in the middle of them. So I understand why the goalkeeper wanted to come out. But when you see that tackle, then you go, man, I, I, I wish we had a goalkeeper in the net. Wallen has three assists on the year, and he finally gets his first goal of 2023. And you can see how happy he was by just the pace he sent that ball into the net.
kind of telling himself, this is, remember how it is when you score? How you ripple the net? Oh, well played by the Terriers. See if they can get one goal back. They've only been able to come up with one shot, one shot on frame. Look at Kennedy. He's off to the races. Kennedy and trailing his wall in. Kennedy still with it. Peacock gets clever. And here comes Wallin. You got to get rid of it quick because Wallin will track you down. What a ball from Sydney Paris on a platter for Kennedy up front. And it is always, a, a, I don't want to say a losing battle, but you, you're up against it when you're a striker who is on the ball sprinting at full speed versus two defenders who are not having to control a soccer ball while running. He almost held the defenders off, but again, a really good last-ditch tackle from behind to just dispossess him at the last second. Kennedy fighting off the two defenders, but brilliant work by Peacock because Kennedy was ready to go 1v1 with the keeper. Slingshotting ahead. Oh, good play by, I tell you, Jake Swallen has just... He's on his game tonight. Sydney Paris, the one, two. Sydney Paris. Here's Wallen again, looking for some kind of opening. Kyle, if you have Jake Swallen playing like Jake Swallen in 2021, Kojima playing in like in 2022, right before he got injured. And then you got Rold Mitchell being Rold Mitchell uh, in the defense playing like the back line is played. That is a recipe for a very, very, very dangerous team. Yeah, it sure is. And they're still looking for a couple of those ingredients to really hit their zenith here this season, but they're close. I mean, Swallen has played the best we've seen him play in years in the last couple of weeks. Here he is again. So smooth. Niang. Trying to turn with his left foot to send that one across. It's deflected out. And it will be another corner. We've seen a lot of corners. We'll see another one. What a what a road it's been for Jake Swallen. Ty. He's playing like a player who has been through some real injury adversity over the past few years and has been reminded. Oh yeah. That's right. I love this. This is fun, right? And it's really cool to see a player who has sort of rediscovered what they love most about being on the field. Well, it is a sight to see. And when this team is clicking, it is a sight to see. Swallen. Tight spaces as Sydney Paris was trying to send a diagonal ball, was reflected, knocked away. This is the ninth corner for the Demon Deacons. Niang, he can hit it from there. So can Sears. And it's deflected off. It will trickle over to Victor. We sit 2-0. The final last year was 3-0. And looks like Wake Forest has no intentions of slowing it down. They are not satisfied with a 2-0 scoreline after dominating since the first whistle of this match. 21 shots and six on target. Two in the back of the net. Arguably three. <laughs> We're going to see another replay. We're going to see something like a social media video of it. And then I'm going to throw it to you. I'm going to send you that gif of Keanu Reeves. Not like this. <laughs> not like this time. <laughs> this is not the hill to die on. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a booking for, I believe, Garrison Tubbs. The yellow card comes back out of the pocket. Oh, yeah, I think it's Prince Ponce, actually. Yep, he's the one that steps up at <laughs> just a bit late. The school of Kovacic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Yeah. You know I was going to bring that up. Yeah, well, no, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? I, well, did, I didn't know that, but uh, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> there, there's another one. That was a fun uh, Sunday text between each other, especially after <laughs> the victory. <laughs> Give the ref a, a, tonight a lot of credit. Yeah. I think he's had just about a perfect game. I know you slightly disagree with, with one, but he's uh, uh, controlled the match very well. Uh, unlike some of our uh, his, his Premier League colleagues over the last few years. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, going on, I, I think he's been absolutely fantastic. This this uh, staff has been really good. It's, uh, you know, that's a tough, of course. I guess there's the handball, too, that it, it, well, there, it, was missed. Of course, it's tough because we look at the instant replay. Well, and, yeah. and you and you may, and your, your point is valid, and, it, and it's right. But yeah. I digress. Again. 15 and a half remaining. It's 2 0. Lake Forest in control. I mean, if we've seen in the professional ranks over the last few weeks, just because you have instant replay doesn't mean you're going to oh, get no, it right. No, you're right. Right? Absolutely. Which is that, a shame. <laughs> so the, you talk, when you're talking about the debacle in that, uh, the offside call, and then listening to the audio that you sent me, it's, it's like, yes, he clearly was onside. Brutal. Wait a minute. We ruled him off. <laughs> uh. Under 15 to go. The Deacons leading 2 0. Seeking some more. On the verge of another clean sheet. Oscar Sears into a pocket of space. Sears slides it over to Niang. Niang. Stutter step, sends it with his right, and it's knocked over the bar by Victor. Oh, put that in the chamber, and he was ready to explode. Uh, I, I, I thought that was in the back of the net when he hit it. And, and yeah, because at first I didn't see the goalkeeper get a touch, and I thought to myself, how did that go over? Because his body looked to be in such good shooting position. He was hips over the ball and ripped it, but uh, just managed to get a touch. Great save. Let's look at that uh, goal by Wallen, his first of the year. This, yeah. There's so many bodies in there, and Wallen's open net. Really nice finish with a throw. Pinged it into the back of the net. Defender was there, too, and he had to evade the defender. Give Niang a lot of credit, too, for making that all happen. Cummins Improving, getting inside the 18, had to come back out. So Chase Oliver has come in. He'll get a taste of the depth of this team. Oh, Garba with a rip. A rip and a skip, and it's knocked out. It'll be, Kyle, another corner. Another corner, that's right. They're 11th of the game. That's another really good shot and a great save by Cameron Victor because that one's bouncing. Those are tough, especially when they have a little bit of English on them. Oh, well played, sir. Well played. I'll be here all night. <laughs> well, if we looked at the field tilt, it would definitely show an unbalanced number in favor of the Demon Deacons, clearly also by the amount of corners that Wake Forest has had. Wofford with no corners on the night. Yeah, it's just been a tough night for Wofford. They came in with a really good game plan, just have not been able to make it work. And you got to credit the Deeks for how they've played this game. I mean, they have just been so exceptional in, in the attacking half. But Wofford came in and said, we're going to bunker and counter. And they did exactly that. But every time they countered, they just didn't have the numbers for it. And the Deeks managed to hold firm 1v1, and there was no help for Wofford. So here in the second half, they've said, all right, we, we're going to sacrifice the counter to try and possess the ball a little more and keep Wake Forest from having as many chances. And it worked through the first 15, 20 minutes of this half. And eventually the Deeks just again imposed their dominance because the Terriers just had no way to build forward in possession against this Deeks midfield. Well, the streak may end at nine, but 
Wofford as a very talented team and a team that if you haven't put them in the conversation for a possible SOCON winner, you need to. As this defense will keep them in any match. And when you have somebody that can score, like Ruel, I think you're in good shape. Yeah, no question about it. A again, you're, you've got a chance to win every game when you concede just zero or one goals. I want to shout out Julie, Julian Kennedy. He has been exceptional up front. He just made a wonderful tackle that got the crowd up. Uh, he's done everything since coming on for Roald Mitchell. And, and I mean, it not, take nothing away from Roald Mitchell, who dealt with a double, sometimes a triple team, all evening. But Julian Kennedy has really brought that striker position to life up front for the Deeks. And everything has happened since he came on the field. And they were looking for that spark, and Julian Kennedy, even though it was a PK, he did provide it. But he's been really good yeah. at, with a yeah. lot of things. You know, the hold-up play, mm -hmm. they found him on that counterattack that he almost went half the pitch, beating two defenders, that tackling. Paris tried to send this one in low, and it was knocked away. And foul call, which will give Wofford a free kick. And stoppage of time is just like an injured terrier. Yeah, a couple of subs here as well, I think, will be coming on. I think uh, Leo Garino is going to see some time for Wake Forest. And hopefully that... That's a good sign, too, though. Paul Jones getting up. He's all right. From Irmo, Irmo, South Carolina. And he is back up. Just under 10 to go. With his team down 2-0. No reason to keep their head down at all. Is Wofford, especially under the guidance of Joel Tyson, you look at, you take away the COVID year, he has progressed every year from 2019, four wins, 2021, five wins, 2022, six wins. Now he's in pretty good standing to get past the six, maybe seven wins. A win won't come tonight, but at four, two, and five, and in contention of the SOCOM championship I think coach Tyson once again has made a very very good jump from the season before and Kennedy take a bow Julian Kennedy he's coming off the bench big spark plug and let's take a look at that goal one more time and that hook that spark right there in front of the official and then Kennedy said no doubt about it sends it rippling into the net. Good guess, though, by Victor, too, and still couldn't stop it. But a team that has put up so many PKs, they have to be the most experienced in the PK department in the nation with six of seven on the season. And they've just done a lot of work in the penalty area. That's what that speaks to is lots of touches in the attacking third and in the penalty area will lead to a lot of goals and a lot of chances from the spot. Oliver on the outside wing, but he's played centrally a lot as he moves in. As Carino is now up top. And Ty, you would be correct. Uh, the Deeks now leading the nation in penalty shots it was a good guess that, that they would be up there just by how many times we've seen the point to the spot this season six is the most right now well, good play by Perez Yang and he gets clipped 
Just under eight to go, two nil. The dying embers of this match, but since the beginning of this contest, Wake Forest has dominated. And they lead two nil with 23 shots. Seven on frame, two in the back of the net. Okay, I was uh, mistaken here because the sorting on, I have to pull that back. It's number two in the nation. Okay. Who's from what I can one? tell. Uh, that would be SIUE has eight. They are seven of eight. Oh, look at the scoop. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Does Carino look like he was behind on that scoop play by Oscar Sears? But an offside flag was up on Garino. Sears also someone that comes off the bench and he was one of the leading scorers last year. So again, this goes for our argument on one of the deepest, if not the deepest team in the nation. You have a kid like Oscar Sears coming off the bench, playing sparing minutes. And you saw his stat line last year. And this is the depth, even without Fessler. And yeah. Fessler's out. And Fessler was the center mid last season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the depth is just outstanding. And, and give, I, I want to give a lot of the players, too, on Wake some credit because the way that college athletics is nowadays, you see, oh, what a delicious ball here's a shot that is well knocked down by victor but yes that was scrumptious and how that did not get past victor well that just shows you how good of a goalkeeper victor is but i you know give a lot of these wake players credit because there are some guys on this deeks team that you would think might have their eyes on more playing time somewhere else and they that's the the faith that they have in this program. They've said, I want to win. I want to play with these good players. What a, a gorgeous ball. Great step onto the left by Chase Oliver. Just put his shot a little too centrally. But you know, you look at a guy like Chase Oliver, Oscar Sears, who, you know, probably could get a, a more playing time somewhere else. But they have, they have said, I love playing for this team. I love playing for this coaching staff. I, I love winning. The conference, you know, playing in, in this incredible conference and competing at the highest level, that means something to these guys. And it's a faith in a program. It's a faith in a staff, in teammates. And there's a lot to be said for that. It's really a, a great thing for Deke's uh, program. Oliver. He is also very creative. The chemistry he has, which we saw on display with Oscar Sears, we saw a couple of moments last season. They just know where each other will make their run, where they're going to be, and that's why you'll see a little bit of in one action. Clever play. Perez. And, and I want to put a bow on that thought, too. Part of the reason this Deeks team is winning is because the depth that they have. Mm -hmm. And those guys are a key part of that. So this team is marketably better. Even if, you, you know, it doesn't show up, you look at a stat sheet and it doesn't pop off the sheet, right? Like, you know, you know they're not playing 90 minutes and they're not scoring loads of goals. The depth on this team is a huge element of what makes them the number four ranked team in the country. And a an ACC and national title contender. It's the first good look that Wofford has had since they put that half volley on frame. Let's see the defense still ushering them back.
it looks like a line coming in for the Demon Deacons as they have definitely secured this win with two and a half to go. This is the remaining schedule for the Demon Deacons. Of course, we talked about coming up on Saturday night. Big, big matchup. An in-state derby between the Tar Heels and the Deacons. Tar Heels 14th in the country. You see where their RPI is. Then Robert Morris here on Tuesday. They had a huge matchup against Notre Dame that will be on the main network. And they travel to Louisville, which I know Louisville has had their hiccups, but a team that is very scary and very talented when they are clicking. Aiton, who's entered the match. Trey Southen coming way off his line. Excited that he can actually get some action in, get a little steps. <laughs> Jakob Anderson will go out and Eli Jackson comes in. Kinnison has also come in on that back line. One minute remaining in the second half. Well, the streak may end for Wofford, but there's a lot to look forward to in the future for the Terriers. Just how stout this team is, how talented this team is, and how well coached this team is. So once they get back to SoCon play, I mean, the goal is still clearly in front of him. Oof, what a charge. What a move by Menendez. Menendez hits the ground. Here's Ruel. And what a stop on that near side by Trace Alfin. And Trace says, let's just calm down and let this clock tick down. And we want to keep that clean sheet. Yeah, and, and, and Fabian Menendez, though, brilliant step into space. Ten, and nine, he's been eight. the maybe Seven, one of the best Wofford players six, on the field tonight. Five, really, really four, good performance three, from him. Gatorade two, player one, of the year two, in the state of South Carolina, but the Deacons on another two, clean four, sheet. Four, two, they have five, done it. It is win 100 here at home. One of the toughest venues to play under Bobby Muse, the Spry Stadium Lights.